What up YouTube? Time for a beer gear review. If you have to keep a reasonable budget and you're trying to upgrade your brew gear, I got two stainless steel small batch fermenters that are both worth consideration. The first one is the SS Brewtech seven gallon brew bucket. The other one is the Anvil stainless steel brew bucket. Both of these are great fermenters. I'm gonna go into what I found to be the pros and cons of both and why I chose one over the other. First up is the SS Brewtech seven gallon brew bucket. This is a seven gallon stainless steel fermentation chamber. It has markings on the inside, four gallon, five gallon, six gallon batches. It actually goes up to seven gallons at the very top, which is perfect for a five gallon batch with enough head space in there. This is a solid stainless steel construction design very clean this one has a true conical bottom both of these buckets also come with a um, a seal gasket that is removable on the top of these things that you can remove it out for cleaning this one has a flat top which is it's a minor thing but it's nice because i could put my temperature gauge in there for my fermentation chamber or locking latches to keep the lid on tight the handles on either side do collapse down this one has the built-in hose barb spigot here on the bottom. The inside of this one has a dip tube that I don't really consider that much of a dip tube. There is a solid mm, three, three and a half, four inch gap between this dip tube when it's in its bottom position and the bottom of this bucket. It is a true conical bottom. It is designed for the trub and everything like that to settle at the bottom there and to keep your clean beer on the top. When you rotate the outside spigot, it does rotate that dip arm, the ideal being that you could rotate it above your trub to make sure you're pulling off clean beer, whatever you rack. I found with this one, that was never an issue because the dip tube does not get low enough that it ever really pulls any of my trub unless I have a very complex batch. And then tilting it to the side here will get it, will elevate it to a point where you can get clean beer off. Most of the time with most of my batches, I found that I ended up tipping this one uh, to get the rest of the beer off of the trub at the bottom once the fermentation is complete. The pros about this one, I do like the fact that it's a true conical bottom. I didn't notice any actual difference in my brews, but hey, from everything I read, it says that it does make for cleaner beer. I like this conical bottom. It's stainless steel as both these are, so it is easy to clean. Very solid constructed build. Um, this one runs $200. You can might be able to get it on sale for a little less than that. You can get it from the brew site for $230, but I found it out there online for $200 is what I purchased for it. Things I don't like about it, these handles. Maybe it's because I got these big Gorilla mitts, but I don't like these collapsible handles. I don't like the fact that when they are in the up position, you're st I'm still kind of holding it in this weird fingers mashed up against the side of it when you're carrying this around when it's full. I don't really see a need for these handles to collapse. I also find it a little bit more cumbersome when I have it in my fermentation chamber because in my fermentation chamber, I can keep two vessels in there and I am sometimes reaching back to slide the other one out. It's just a little bit more obnoxious to maneuver this one around here with these collapsible handles. The dip tube in this one comes out and when you buy it, it has two little rubber gaskets on this that create a seal. Not sure why they did this. The first O-ring ripped off within maybe three or four batches and the other one lost came off shortly after that. The problem with that is that now when this dip tube is in there, when you rotate this, the dip tube always hangs in the down position because there's no friction to grab this to actually rotate it. The solution, I don't know if you could see that, I used some pliers and basically squeezed the tube down just a little bit, flattened it out just a bit where it hits the side there and creates enough friction where when you jam this in there now, it works. I think it was a weird decision on their part to design it like that, but that is an easy solution if you guys run into that same problem. Next up is the Anvil Brew Bucket. This is a seven and a half gallon fermenter. Once again, this is perfect for five gallon batches, giving you enough headspace at the top of this to make sure that you don't get any bubble off. They list this as having a conical bottom, but as you can see there, it's really semi-conical at best. There is a little bit of a drop in the middle there, but nothing significant. I don't know if that impacts the beer at all. Like I said, I haven't noticed any difference in the flavor. This one does have a hose barb. The difference is this hose barb is removable. The thing I actually came to like about this is the fact that I can leave this off the entire time while I'm pulling off samples and everything like that. Then it just makes it a little bit easier to sanitize, slip the hose on and get everything seated for when I am racking the beer. Standard spigot on the bottom of this one. Does come with a temperature gauge 
just to kind of see where the, the temperature of your fermentation. Most people keep a digital thermometer inside there. This one has fully rigid handles on the side of it. They stick out a good amount. The lid on this one does have a little bit of dome shape to it. I've been told that's supposed to help with the fermentation process. Once again, that's all theoretical. Locking mechanisms on the side of this one, very similar to the SS Brutech. Does have a gasket seal in there that is removable for cleaning. This one has uh, 3D markings on here. The other one is acid etched, but this one has 3D markings on here all the way down to just below four gallon batch. And it does have a rotating pickup tube that rotates when you rotate the handle on the outside. A couple of big differences you'll see in that rotating tube. That tube goes down to about a quarter of an inch off the bottom of this thing. If you fill this thing up with just liquid, you could pick up almost every drop with that dip tube, which I like. I do use this one to rotate it off of the trub whenever I'm first starting my racking process. And as you'll see, because of the angle, the way this is set up, it significantly changes the location of that, the tip of that dip tube as you rotate it as opposed to the other one, which really just moves at a minor amount. It does have a flat bottom design. This one retails for 129. Ding, ding, ding. And the winner is the Anvil Brew Bucket. For me, I like the features of this one that it has. There are some small differences between the two of them that I think most people will find are pretty minor. Uh, the handle difference, the difference in the design. This one with these, with the tapering at the bottom, it does make it a little bit more awkward to transport around. It makes it much more difficult to slide if you're trying to move around in a fermentation chamber like the one that I have, because you basically have to grab it from the bottom to get it to slide anywhere without tipping, as opposed to this one where you can grab the handles. I like the footprint of the anvil brew bucket. It's a little bit more just standard with the straight walls and the flat bottom. I also really like the price point. When you get down to what gear you're gonna to use to grow your home brew operation, it does come down to quality gear because eventually you start buying stuff that's gonna last you for a long period of time as opposed to you know the plastic brew buckets and stuff like that that I was using when I first started. But within that, you have to say, is the difference of what I'm getting of two stainless steel fermentation chambers worth the extra $70? And for me, it was not. I'd rather have two of these and some extra gear. The end all be all for me is I'm going with the Anvil brew bucket. I already bought another one of these, so I have two of these. I'm gonna go ahead and sell this one because like I said, it is a great fermentation chamber. I'm just not gonna keep buying more of these to add these to add more batches because I like this one better. Take the money that I'm making from this one put it back into my ingredients and other gear for my brew house. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this video was helpful. I'm gonna try and do more gear, beer gear review videos on my channel in addition to my brew days videos that I've been doing. If you like this video and you like to see some of my other videos, make sure you hit that like and subscribe down there to get notifications when new video drops and follow my channel for more brew days and beer gear review.